Resolved the agenda for the July the 5th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Deputy Mayor and Tony is absent with notice, and Councilor Morio is in on video, as well as uh, Chief Fedorchuk and CFO Ganita and Director Fedorchuk. Resolve the minutes of the June 21st, 2022 regular meeting. What's that? Where am I? <laughs> I'm reading that. July the 5th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by. I think that's the minutes. That was the correct date. Oh, minutes. Sorry, I'm mixed up here. Resolve the minutes of the June 21st, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by. Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, first of all, just before we start the meeting, um, I just want to take a pause here. And uh, at our last, uh, or actually a couple weeks ago, we, uh, a few of us traveled to the Dauphin uh, Spring, uh, or sorry, June meetings in, uh, in, in Dauphin, and a few of us attended. And at that meeting, there was um, some awards that were given out. And the first award that was given out was for 15 years of service to the, to the town of Swanagher and, and serving on council was to Councillor White. So congratulations, Councillor White. Thank you, Your Worship. It's been a wonderful 15. Looking forward to many more. Awesome. And then there was a second award that was presented and that is to Councillor Friesen of 20 years to Council. And thank you again on behalf of all Council and the community for both your service to uh, everything that you do in the community. My pleasure. So after we've done the meeting, um, we'll maybe get, uh, get Danielle to take some photos of us, but uh, here you go, uh, Councillor Friesen. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. That's very nice. Alrighty, so moving on, communications, 6.1. Result of the Northwest Regional Library audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2021 be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Anything there, Councillor Delorier? Uh, n nothing specifically, but I can try and answer any questions that, uh, if any councillors have any questions, but other than that, it's a fairly clean bill of health. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2, resolved that the Northwest Regional Library annual report for 2021 be received, moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Again, I can answer any questions on the report uh, or uh, give any information, but uh, other than that, there's Mr. Roy, Councillor uh, Just a comment. I would, I'd hope, uh, I would encourage you to uh, take thank you from Council. If I can speak for Council, I don't try not to do that, but uh, we are, we're impressed with the volunteer work done by the majority of that, that committee and the things they do for our valley is, is so appreciated. So please thank them for us. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3, result of the building permits 27, 22 through 30, 22 with a total estimated value of $18,700 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to 6.4. Result of the impact of reassessment 2023 report from Manitoba Municipal Relations Assessment Services be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor 
Memorial discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor White. I'm just uh, wondering on the status of the bouquet emanating from the uh, sewage lagoons. Have you had any luck with some of the new protocols, new chemicals you may or not be trying? Uh, so we're adding ferric and we're in the midst of a study uh, for an upgrade that would add aeration that would deal with, that would help with the smell. You had mentioned in the past the possibility of aeration with different sized bubblers. Uh, have you had an opportunity to put those bubblers in the, in the lagoons yet to see what happens? No, we can't put those in until the environmental impact assessment is done because there's a license for the lagoon. So you can't make a change like that without having everything in place. So you can't, it's extremely well regulated, so you can't just try things on it. Like it all has to be designed as part of a project. And so that would be part of the project. Well, that's on your list of things you want to try though? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Friesen. I'm wondering about the, another flag out on the highway. Okay. Those are spoken for, that'll be the, <clears throat> the mm -hmm. Jack and the Queen Platinum Jubilee. Perfect. They're just not here yet. Okay. Thanks. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2, 7.3, uh, Councillor Reports. I will begin with Councillor Delorier. <clears throat> uh, nothing to report as far as meetings go. I guess I just wanted to uh, say congratulations to the class of 2022. I've had a graduation since, uh, since uh, our last meeting and uh, just hoping everybody has a happy and safe summer. So I like happy summers, happy falls. Summer's coming, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, 22nd of June, uh, your worship, you and I, and uh, I forgot who else went along, Derek, yourself? Councillor Bobbick. Councillor Bobbick, we toured to Dauphin for the uh, Parkland District meetings, which are always so informative. Uh, I appreciate getting that recognition. I thank you for uh, bringing it up. Uh, we talked a lot about immigrant protocols, crime, health care issues. And all the things that we have, they are being expressed by other communities, no doubt. Uh, one thing that popped up, we, uh, we had lunch with the Reeve from the Arm of Dauphin, and he spent time talking to us, and uh, he and the mayor had the opportunity to uh, talk about the possibility of the Reeve, the local Reeves here, and or him and others, meeting once every two or three months, say what's happening, how do we learn to get along, how can we work collaboratively, they would bring their CAO along and sometimes another counselor. So I love the idea of being proactive and, and working together. Then on the 27th, we had our G4 at Durban, and uh, so the, the, the similar topics, economic development, the airport, how to uh, tax for that is hotly debated, and recycle and, and the Ukraine situation, trying to help people from Ukraine. We have got roughly 30 people in our community now. Then on the 28th, we had the, uh, the meeting at the rink with the community. We were invited to talk about their concerns relative to the arena, the options that were available, no fix, parcel fix, new arena. Uh, all of them are important, so I'd appreciate uh, the community taking a look at that, uh, that survey, which is on our website. And there's also a meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 at the arena again where all the demographics, all the numbers, all the stats are on beautiful big uh, charts which can explain to you uh, what it's all about. And uh, you, you have a chance to get your input into it and we'd appreciate getting that input. Then on the 29th, I met with the uh, Minister John Ray, the Minister of uh, Immigrant Services and Advanced Education. And his main topic was the, the immigration of the Ukrainian people and what a, a humanitarian effort that was and how important it was and, and we're all in favor of that. Then he talked about the possibility of economic development. So at the request of the mayor, I'm going to try to organize a, a handful of people in the know uh, 
Living Word Bible Institute, some from the religious community, uh, the school division, Gary Wolchuk, the chair, has been very helpful in trying to uh, look at some solutions. What skills do we do we need? What skills do they have? How do we look after that? And July the 1st, uh, I had the uh, opportunity to uh, work with the immigrant service team uh, at the July 1st Canada Day celebration, which uh, Councillor Fries did such a wonderful job. And we had roughly 75 people from different countries come to the barbecue uh, in the earlier part of the morning. And uh, I realized how, how illiterate I am relative to language. I'm sure there's a half a dozen different languages spoken, and we all tried to communicate, and we did. And in the afternoon, I had the opportunity to work with Mr. Bobbick and the mayor again uh, serving ice cream. So hamburgers and ice cream, I didn't need dinner that night. So uh, it was wonderful to be both part of the community and, and thank everybody, especially yourself, Phil, and your team for the work they did. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just see uh, uh, how Poole did. Uh, we get an email from the EDO from Dolphin on immigration. <coughs> If you can take a note and just check on that because we were supposed yeah. to get an email um, I'll have to talk with the minister if, if we did not. Councillor Bob. <clears throat> yes, also attended the AMM meeting at Dauphin. I found it very interesting as the AMM goes, but uh, lots of interesting facts there. Uh, I'd just like to speak a little bit on uh, some of the brush cutting that needs to be done around the town of Swan River. On the way to the golf course, I call it, I think it's River Road there, there's a, there's a real blind corner there. There's an accident waiting to happen. I think we should maybe have a look at that and proceed somewhere. Also, while we were in golf, and I noticed that it seems to be that their uh, bypass and all things are all mowed from ditch to ditch. I just don't know, and I'm not saying this because I live on Highway 10 East, but we don't seem to have any mowing. The willows are getting higher and higher, and they're getting to be traffic hazards. Whether that is highways issue, but it seems to be, is it the town of Fawn River has hired a contractor to do that? Uh, we have the MOA strip because highways just leaves it. Like it's highways ditch, but yep. they don't do anything. Yep, that's uh, So we mow uh, a strip kind of along the asphalt, we, or along the gravel. Yeah, so I we see. don't go down into down the ditch. So would that be something that we would not talk to highways about about cleaning those ditches up? It seems to I be. Can, I can definitely uh, contact Steve because I know they did a whole bunch down by Kenville. Okay. They had uh, Adams down into the ditch yeah. Yeah. and uh, he was scrubbing it right up to the top of the ditch. So and I again, will uh, uh, make a note to contact. Okay, that would be great. That. I'm just if you have a chance to get out towards that way, I, that would be the town's responsibility, that other. Yeah, and, we, and we were looking at that. Okay, area. Area. perfect. Yeah. Uh, just, I was hoping to get a report off of uh, Council and Tony on CPCOPP tonight, but uh, I'm sure he'll be bringing that forward. But just a reminder, there still is a challenge of $100 a counselor, and we've only seen a couple of stuff up to play. Um, when we spoke of potholes around town and, and, and extending the job on 2nd uh, Street? 2nd Street, so. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, if we look at the cemetery lot, there needs to be lots of patching. There's lots of patching all over. I would really like you to have a look at maybe spreading that money out into the whole of the town and getting more of a, a bang for our buck, I would call it, for all the asphalt that comes in. I don't really know how much asphalt you would get for that, but I would think there would be a sufficient amount. I don't know if you would look at a contractor applying to the potholes or if you would do it something totally up to you. But if you could entertain that idea, it would be really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also like to come and speak with you this week. I was wanting to talk with you before, but I didn't get a chance today. On the asphalt that you're doing, you're milling and replacing on the second street there. Is there, do you know, have any idea of the depth that you're going or how much asphalt will be left after you're done milling? On second street south, uh, we're pulling it out because it's gator cracked, so it's totally failed. So you're pulling the asphalt? Yeah, Second Street North, we're milling and filling. Okay, no, perfect. That's what I'm asking. So yeah, I was looking at that street and I thought it just worked well milling, pulling, yanking. Yeah, it. yeah, no, it's uh, gator cracks. Perfect. So the yeah. Structures. Okay, filled. thank you. Uh, fireworks, I really enjoyed it. They were really loud. Yeah, and my dog enjoyed it. I fixed the screen door in the morning. But it was, it was, uh, I thought they were really good. They were impressive. 
especially when you're that close to them. So yeah. Really. <laughs> uh, we have a, we've attended one meeting over at the arena, and we'll be attending one tomorrow. So uh, I've just in the, in the conversations that correct me if I'm wrong. We've hired a consultant to tell us what the problem is with our rate, right? So which route we should take, more or less, more or less. Have we exhausted information from our local contractors? Like, have we involved any of them? Uh, well, I guess we, we did a building assessment in 2018. That that's the that's the major document that we have. Okay. The the consultant we're dealing with now has not done any assessments. He's he's giving us options on which way how to go. To fix it. That's correct. So yeah. So 2018, a building assessment was done by an engineering company. But the repairs that on, on the ice surface and now that are leaking hasn't been assessed by him or anybody else. Uh, not not through his engineering staff. They've, they've looked at the building, they've seen the plans, and they're just giving us like class D estimates okay. on I don't know how many have a meeting with you and we'll speak on that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to be going. Sorry, but we're going to be going into camera talking about a few things. So okay. if you want, you can bring it up. There. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, also served ice cream at the park. There it was great. There was lots of people. Beautiful day. Uh, just uh, go back to the snow dumping site again. Uh, I spoke with uh, Eddie Child, the manager of Watershed there, and they're getting in touch with you to do the survey there. So I happened to be in that area and spoke with one resident. And some of the ideas that come up is a dog park there. Uh, there's also the talk of a rain garden, which if you look it up on the web, look at rain, there's all different sorts of rain gardens. That could be used to uh, consume your water in a, like a pond with a bridge over it. Or there's all different sorts of things to look at. So which the watershed may be able to apply for grants. So I'll try to bring more information to you and I'll get it to the staff here. So maybe they can use know what you want there. Pardon me. Where is this? Where? Um, it's north of Fourth Street South, yeah. west of the town shop. You were in Mister Chaplin's. Oh, east okay. of Eleventh Ave. Yep. Mm -hmm. Turtons. Yep. Yeah. Sort of big grass area. And that Jay does look too bad. And that pretty much it. Yep. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councilor Morial. First, I would like to start off by congratulating Councillor White on his 15 years on council, so thank you very much. And then Councillor Friesen, same to you for your 20 years, uh, huge accomplishment. And also, uh, thank you very much again for coordinating the events uh, on Canada Day at the parks and my regrets for not being in the community to uh, help you out with that. So thank you very much for that. Um, haven't been doing a whole lot uh, with face-to-face -face meetings, um, but I've um, been joining in remotely as much as my schedule allows. But uh, just want to let council know that uh, I got information, and some of you may also have seen some of the notice um, in the last AMM brochure uh, that Public Service Canada uh, is suspending collecting the RCMP uh, retro pay invoices to the communities until a decision is made if the federal government is actually going to absorb that cost or continue to pass it on. So uh, in the meantime, they've agreed to suspend invoicing um, municipalities that have direct service contracts with the RCMP um, until that decision is made. So, and again, if anybody has any uh, questions, concerns, or comments regarding the uh, arena repairs or retrofit um, for t tomorrow's meeting, uh, you feel free to email to me and I will try and uh, get answers to you as quickly as possible. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council Memorial, you, you, you said that um, the retro pay uh, invoices have been stalled or whatever word that you use. Um, Suspended, yeah. So, um, I guess my question to CFO Ganita is, did we pay that bill already? Uh, yeah, they, uh, 
invoiced uh, a quarter of the expected increase that just the last couple bills. Oh, okay, right. So we so it's installments is that we're paying uh, this or being invoiced. Yeah. So any further with that, Councillor Morio, we will not see that on our future invoices. Uh, from what I understand, yeah, correct. Uh, our next invoice won't have those um, that seventy-five percent because uh, from when we got initially invoiced the uh, one quarter, um, they were still working on the exact calculations uh, for what that total amount was. If you recall those emails going back and forth with those numbers changing, um, so any further invoicing on our quarterly invoices will be suspended until uh, a decision is made from what I understand. Okay. So, and if, if it does go in our favor that uh, the feds will um, absorb the retro cost, then we would expect either a credit or a return on that 25% that we already paid. And who did you say suspended this? Where did that direction come from? Uh, that came from the, the Committee uh, Public Services Canada. Uh, that was the, the group that we were supposed to have the meeting with coming up there that was supposed to be jointly coordinated with AMM and then we had requested a separate meeting also. So so it's, it's uh, Procurement Services Canada. Okay, good to know. Thanks for the update. Uh, I'll send you some of the literature on it. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lyon. Just a question, Councillor Morial. Uh, you're privy to that information that uh, I've shared with the people involved relative to the CT scan and the number is going up on about a 45 degree angle which came from PMH and you sit on the PMH board representing all of PMH, I understand that, but you obviously also represent the, uh, the Swan River Valley. Uh, have you uh, considered uh, talking to uh, CEO Schoenberg and saying, hey, now's the time that we have this data, he's probably doing it, but just in case he isn't, then not shared health, say, hey, we've got this information, what are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. Yes, that information was forwarded to me uh, by CEO uh, Schoenbart, who we obtained that information from shared health, um, from the Medical Transportation Coordination Center, uh, regarding the uh, number of EMS trips out of the Swan River, regarding, um, in relation to the CT scan trips to either Dauphin or the Baw. Um, and Mr. Schubert uh, is going to be forwarding on and is continuing to support our request and uh, efforts to get a CT scan here and is also lobbying as hard as he can um, through his avenues, um, through the CEO network um, with the health regions to uh, share health and diagnostic okay. services. Okay. But yeah, he definitely agrees that uh, um, Swan River does require one. Um, even though there's a difference of opinion between us, the region, and shared health on that, but uh, he is in, definitely in our court uh, in um, supporting our efforts to get a CT scanner here in Swan River, um, which would eliminate um, a lot of challenges that they are experiencing from the staffing side um, and resource management that's <coughs> created due to a lack of CT scanner here in Swan River. Perfect, I agree. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilor Frieza. Um, 28th of June, I had the pleasure of slicing home-baked bread at the museum. Um, they invited me out to help out. They had all the grade four classes from Swan and Bozeman. And um, Matt Black and Kevin Silverthorne baked bread in the oven, in the ovens, and we sliced it up, and then all the kids got a piece of this homemade bread. It was lovely. Um, then on July 1st, let me see what happened that day. Oh yeah, that's what happened that day. <laughs> Picnic in the park. Um, there's going to be a thank you put in the Star and Times because I'm not going to name everybody that needs a thank you. Um, except you counselors, of course, for <clears throat> coming and scooping ice cream. I got to work at the Safe Grad, and it was very well attended. Um, thank you, Dwayne, for the barbecuing down at the Immigration Services. That's a great thing. Um, 
And I really like that rain garden thing, and I'm thinking the Communities in Bloom might step up to the plate and help out with something like that. Probably something that I'll mention it to uh, manager yeah. there. And I, I just get it to him in touch base here. I, I just thought that the watershed is saying that you should have a rain garden, but it's just an idea that comes well, up. And there I like is, it. There it's is some good. grants available for that that only through the watershed we can. So it might solve some of them. We could doctor the drainage issue up to make the I also would like the communities in Bloom money in the bank so that we can pay some bills. If you could do that, sir. And good luck to all the uh, ball players this weekend. If anybody wants a concession shift, let Tracy know. She'd be happy to put you to work at the concession. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, you know, I mentioned that uh, we uh, traveled to Dolphin for the Parkland District meetings. Uh, there had been some resolutions that were uh, uh, forwarded and also some that were defeated. Uh, moving through to the uh, to the fall, and some of those have to do with waste uh, disposal financial assistance. Uh, there's some community safety and well-being plans, farmland portion assessment. Uh, this is just things that will come forward at the fall. Um, AMM, as well as the International Educated Nurses, and, and that was something that I didn't realize that we, the, the province, uh, didn't accept, I guess you can say, but they want to lobby uh, the province and I guess the College of Nurses to have, uh, to allow individuals that are from elsewhere to uh, be able to practice uh, within the province of Manitoba, which other provinces actually allow them to, uh, to practice. So that'll be one big one, I think, in the fall time, especially with the fact is that we have such a, a shortage of nurses uh, in our province. And then there was also the disaster financial assistance eligibility uh, that they'll be going along with as well. So I'll pass these along if you guys all want to read them because they'll be coming up in the fall if you're around, and uh, you'll see uh, them come across the, the table. Um, one thing that we've been talking about with some of our neighbor municipalities is that um, the federal uh, there's federal redistribution going on, and that is the lines in which which constituencies people uh, fall into. <clears throat> and uh, right now they have a preliminary line that runs the, the Churchill riding right in the middle of our own constituency that would take uh, Minnetonas and Bozeman and East, and that would include. Uh, the Arm Mountain, as well as Manitoba's Bozeman, and, and East. So it doesn't make very much sense, but uh, they, have a, they have a mandate to, to, uh, to fill in a certain number to each uh, constituency. I spoke with MP Dan Mazur actually tonight about this, and he's going to be reaching out to those municipalities and ours as well. But there will be a time when we'll have a chance to um, make a presentation before the commission if we have to. So hopefully that's re, re, uh, reconsidered. But it sounded like when he was talking about it, it sounded like Swan River originally was in that line where we were going to be in Churchill too. And then they actually moved the line over. So I don't know where this is going, but it, it's uh, interesting because um, uh, it doesn't make any sense to split up a region such as ours where we are kind of isolated to a certain degree. Um, this Friday is the Credit Union's uh, annual Beef on a Bun, and uh, I believe that's held from 11 till 2, and uh, half of the proceeds are going to be going to the CT Scanner project that we've been fundraising for for a number of of years and lobbying the, uh, the provincial government on considering having this uh, CT scanner installed. So we, we have a, a huge contingent of individuals that are, are volunteering. It's going to be a big event, so everyone come out and, and have uh, a, uh, some beef on a bun. And, and they're also going to be taking donations at a table if people choose, if they want to make a donation to the CT scanner fund as well. So looking forward to that. And uh, other than that, everybody's also kind of everything else, so I don't think there's really much more to rehash over. And I will move on to CEO Pool.
Uh, just a couple things I have uh, in camera tonight, the, the arena project, the town growth plan, just looking for some direction there. Uh, <clears throat> we'll be holding interviews for the Municipal Services 2 position later this week. I have a meeting with Owen Ferguson regarding the, the town and provincial crime initiative, I guess we'll call it, but uh, get some answers from, from the province there. Uh, and you'll see on the agenda the stray animal program, uh, just looking for options and where council would like to go with that. And uh, drafting multiple bylaws, so prepare for those when Summers does. Okay, and that's it. Uh, I just want, lastly want to say my report to thank uh, Director Furochuk. Uh, for his work in organizing and getting the grass uh, cutting and the trimming done under the strain or, or the lack of, uh, of uh, employees that we were going through a tough time with and he managed to uh, get a lot of that stuff done in some areas where it was pretty tough and, and the demand was high and uh, meant that maybe some people had to work some longer hours to get the job done but uh, we did, and, uh, and we'll move on. I understand that there's more employees that have been hired to help with uh, with this maintenance, but uh, I think just give uh, a shout out to Director Ferorchuk for that. Councillor Friesen? I just wanted to give a shout out to Don <clears throat> Hagman, who helped on July 1st. He was super. Oh, and, and actually, I, I missed that one, but on, on Canada Day, uh, council Friesen, again, after me being on council, this is my 12th Canada Day, and being down the park and you being instrumental on organizing that, and we all thank you for all your hard work in that, so it's been very much appreciated. Thank you. All right, so then we'll move on to 8 and 8.1. Resolve that the Chief Administrative Officer accept and sign the offer of purchase for 845 Willow Street South in the amount of $40,000, $179 plus taxes. Be it further resolved, the Chief Administrative Officer sign the lease agreement for the use of the storage ship, sorry, storage building located at 845 Willow Street South. Moved by Councillor White. Second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bollard. So am I under the impression we're selling the property and keeping the bill, leasing the building? Yes, well, ev everything's being sold, but we will lease the building because uh, all he, he doesn't need the building, we do. So that was an option okay. that was discussed, and, and we would lease it from him for an amount. We paid the hydro. But the lease amount is right up our alley. And the property. He gets to use the property. The property will be in his name. Over the that's that's correct. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, Councillor Morio. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank uh, administration for thinking outside the box. We gave them the parameters um, of what our thoughts were on the last um, go around on this piece of property and. Uh, they came to uh, an agreement with the potential purchaser there, so uh, thank you for doing that and uh, appreciate it. Okay, any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Do you have something? Uh, no, I'm good, sorry. Not good. Okay. 8.2. Resolve the amended 2022 fee schedule be received and approved. Uh, that should probably stay the aquatic center. Uh, well, no, we have to change the entire fee schedule. Just the second attachment is the what's changed. Okay. Uh, moved by Councillor Friesen. Seconded by anybody? Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, would the director for be able to uh, outline what the changes he's made and what's the reason that prompted? 
adopted this at this time versus our regular annual review of the C schedule. Uh, that was on an email, Director Fedorcha. Yeah, it wasn't an email, but go ahead. Yeah, so essentially we didn't, we had our annual one month and three month passes. Uh, we've had them suspended since we've opened since COVID because we just couldn't guarantee we could remain open for those extended periods. And uh, now we're confident in moving forward with something, but we're going to change the program a bit. Um, we also had concerns from our, our loyal patrons that use the pool quite frequently that the passes, the 20 passes and 10 passes were getting quite expensive for them. Um, one patron that swims, you know, four times a week was, was already spending in excess of like, you know, 1200 bucks when an annual membership when we closed was like 435. Um, so we kind of, we developed this system similar to the Gallagher Center in Yorkton. Uh, I think it fits our needs really well. Um, instead of annuals and one month and three month passes, we're going to do 50 passes, 100 passes and 150 passes. So this gives the ability for the patients to pick depending on their usage and they get a discount upon that usage. So somebody who goes three times a week for 48 weeks of the year is going to swim approximately 144 times. For that 150 pass is very beneficial to them to buy all at once, right? Someone who only swims 100 times a year will look at the 100 pass. Uh, but these passes never expire. The more you buy, the bigger discount you get, and uh, it's just a, it's kind of a you know discounted rate for our our patrons that use the pool quite frequently. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It makes sense to me now that um, I'm reading through it. You answered some of the questions that I had regarding like dental expiry and, and whatnot. So thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight point three. Yeah, I didn't have a resolution for this. Basically, uh, this is regarding our stray animal control. And I'm I'm really just looking for direction. I know that we've suspended the the, the traps going out, but uh, we also received a letter from the veterinary clinic that they would not receive animals. The the main reason being uh, evenings, or I should say, select evenings and weekends. They cannot care for those animals during those times. So I've, I've contacted the Animal Protection League, and they they are willing to entertain uh, a proposal from the town where, where we would have to pay for them to look after those animals on those we select weekend evenings and weekends. So uh, I, I just drafted something up, uh, pretty generic. I have not given it to the, to the veterinarians or the Animal Protection League. I, I really just wanted to see what council's wishes on this. Were you wishing to stay out of the animal? Stray animal business, or do, are we looking to to spend some money on, on getting the services back? That's what it's going to take. Okay, anybody? Councilor White. Just reading through it, uh, uh, there is a number of dollars we give the veterinary clinic right now to look after animals in the evening. Uh, if you're talking about our contribution yeah. to the clinic, that has nothing to do with the animal or care of animals. That is our contribution as far as a, a valley-wide um, uh, organization that we own the building. Okay, so we own the building. So the monies that are filled, sent to that commission, that monies are used for the care of that building and that property. Not has nothing to do with the overall operation of, of the the business itself. So that's correct, but I think what you're asking is what did we pay the to impound them, correct? Yeah. yeah. Pay so for that right now? In 2019 we paid uh, just over two thousand dollars, just over twenty one hundred dollars. Twenty twenty we paid eighteen fifty nine. Twenty twenty one we paid four thousand two hundred and three dollars. So if the vet clinic is no longer providing that service, could we not take those dollars? And give them to the pound, whatever the term is now. Well, I I did do that. I lowered. We still have to pay the vet clinic for looking after them during business hours, but we're going to have to pay somebody else 
something to look after them on the weekends and the evenings. Could it be taken out of that dollar figure? Well, uh, well, yeah, but it's going to be more. That's, our costs are going to increase. The, the vet clinic outright, like there's no other way to say it, they paid for these evenings and weekends. But up till now, in the evenings, when they've had people up to now, do those people were paid, did that come out of that $18,000? No. Okay, whatever the number you just shared with me. No. Okay. The vet subsidized the care, right? Yes. That's why we got the letter. Right. They can't afford to do it anymore. Well, I think there's more to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we should go too far into that, unless we're on camera. For the discussion on the question, though, of the animal care. I got one here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Council Morial. Uh, Mr. Poole, uh, is it my understanding that under the, our current bylaw with the pets, like if, some, if a stray dog or animal um, was secured and put impounded at the vet clinic, the charges that were incurred at the vet clinic uh, were required to be paid by the animal owner prior to it being released? Is that correct? That's correct. They would. The, the vet clinic would always ask uh, for approval of payment on the fine prior to releasing the animal. Okay, so can we, under this proposed agreement that you got there, can we continue with that model, that whatever these charges are between the vet clinic and the Animal Protection League, if be, that uh, the animal owner needs to clear up those before the animal is released? Yeah, I thought I had that in there, but it must have been an oversight, just it was... It, it might be, I might be missing reading it, but I... So, so technically, at the end of the day, that cost should be a wash for any animal that we impound. The, both the vet clinic and the animal protection league charges should be recouped by the uh, animal owner. Well, the, the, the issue is the stray animal. So if there's an animal that we don't know the owner, or the owner hasn't come forward, and right. it's not a feral, feral animal... Uh, if then there's the other options, costs that uh, right. so we would have to Somebody looking to adopt a, that pet doesn't want to pay all those fines and fees, so the vet clinic would have to pony up and, and, and either try and convince that owner or somebody would have to pay those fees. So that's, that's the, the number one change in this, and that's where the, the vet clinic has really pushed us to, to if the animal is adopted, could the town waive those fees or pay for them, basically? Okay, for the discussion, Councillor Delore. So, in the draft agreement, <clears throat> who is the one that deems it unadoptable? Uh, I would be a veterinarian. <clears throat> so, the way I read this then is. If an animal is deemed to be adoptable, we're on the hook for however long it sits in the in the care. No. no. Under under hours of operation, stray animals should be impounded at a facility owned by the vet board for a period of three business days. After which, uh, animal be put up for adoption. It says somewhere. <clears throat> So, so after three days, if they were put up for adoption, then I would assume that that animal would be transferred to the Animal Protection League premises for a, or a foster place and taken outside, out of the vet clinic property, correct? Uh, yes, or it, like the vet clinic doesn't have a problem with that facility being used. They could keep it there. But this, this has to state, I swear it was in here, if it's over three days, it's euthanized. Yeah. That's right underneath being done on a dock. Yeah, that's it. that's what it says now. But no, it should be three days and it's gone. That's that's our rule. Well, then we need clarity in this draft yeah, agreement. I before. agree, but I, I again, I thought that was in there. But have, uh, have the other parties made very fast? Have the other two parties seen this agreement? No. No. Okay. I think that the question right now that Mr. Poole is asking is, are we okay with kind of going down this road? 
or do we want to get completely out of it, or do we want to go and reach out to the Animal Protection League and kind of have some kind of a, a joint effort between the vet clinic, which will continue taking our animals or strays during regular times, but it's those evenings and weekends where we have the void, where Animal Protection League might be able to fill in that void for us. Yeah, this, this agreement is in very, very draft form. There's it may not be totally clear right now. What I'm looking for is am I on the right track? Right. Yeah, I agree. And and, and I think that's and, and this will go into some more detail if that's the direction the council is telling you to go. Exactly. Or do we stay away from stray animals? We're out of that business. Some community can create a business if they like. So that's what we're asking. So. Um, for me, uh, I, I think this is in the right direction. I think that we have to do something. I agree. And, and, I, and I like the idea of involving the, the Animal Protection League if we can. So I think it's a step in the right direction. I concur completely. Uh, it doesn't hurt to talk. We need the Animal Protection League. Hopefully include the veterinarians and or their staff and the people from council and say, hey, we, we want to look after these pets. Where, where's the middle road here? Yeah, I'm just same thing. As long as the animals are looked after, and I think we're on the right track here. So it's not that there's going to be dogs and cats just left to run around. So I mean, yeah, I do believe we're on the right track here. And Councilor Glory, yeah, let's go ahead. And Councilor Morio. Um, pending, uh, I, I'm in favor of exploring this uh, agreement farther, uh, but I would hold decision until seeing a final agreement but definitely uh, um, in favor of exploring this so that we can exhaust this avenue and uh, do our due diligence on it and before we uh, um, make the final decision or say that we're not in the stray animal business anymore yeah okay last word Councilor Bach so am I under the impression if this is all the, everything falls into place that the fees for that eighteen hundred dollars one year, two thousand for another, four thousand would go to the Animal Protection League. Because that would deal with them through the business hours, and they would deal with them through the non-business hours. That's correct. It would it would be split between the clinic and the protection league. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, a lot for the discussion. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 10.1, result that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29086 to 29128, totaling 134,341.06 as listed on Schedule A. Direct deposits totaling $775 as listed on Schedule B. And direct deposits totaling $4,079.43 as listed on Schedule C. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Balbic. Discussion? <clears throat> um, sorry, Councillor Balbic. Uh, just uh, on the AMM trading company with the Ford distributors, what does that work down to a price per liter? Uh, I'd have to get that for you. Yes. You can. It's not an hour. So you can get that okay. yeah, for the discussion. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas sections 365.2 of the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which properties uh, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. And whereas sections 372 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may set any terms or conditions for the sale of a property to be sold for taxes and may set a reserve bid in the amount of the tax arrears and cost in respect of the property. Be it resolved that the Town of Swan River place a reserve bid on each property included in the 2022 tax sale in the amount of the tax arrears and costs owing in respect of the property. <clears throat> Moved by Councilor Morio. 
Second by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor uh, Bobbitt. So it's a reserve bid, but do we have the right to remove our bid? This is giving, this is giving administration uh, to the, the authority to set the, um, the reserve. They wouldn't have the authority to remove the, the reserve, in my opinion. You're saying that you wouldn't want? Okay, let's say a property for eight thousand dollars for ten thousand dollars worth of of arrears, but somebody offered seventy five hundred dollars. Would we keep it? I guess it. it, it in the in the end, we would get it, and then we, we could entertain selling it at a later point. Yeah. Because the reserve bid the during the auction, yeah. that's that's that's, that's yeah. there, right? It's set. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you can in midstream change the rules, right? <clears throat> Not supposed to. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 10.3, result that the following contributions budgeted in the 2022 financial plan be made from the general operating fund to the following funds. Equipment replacement reserve, $170,000. Fire truck replacement reserve, $40,000. Employee benefits reserve, $5,000. Reserve for uh, rental tables and chairs, $2,000. Recreational facilities reserved for major repairs, $40,000. Reserve for landfill capital and closure costs, $20,000. Road improvement reserve, $61,500. Crime prevention reserve, $50,000. And handy, van, handy transit van operating fund, $7,550. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.5. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by the Manitoba Assessment Services on January the 20th and the 31st, February 8th and 28th, March 28th, April 27th, May 5th, 9th, 16th, 24th, and 30th, and June 7th and 27th be made to the 2022 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $17,001.40 and the resulting reductions totaling $12,384.84. Just to let your worship know, 10.4 uh, was skipped, so after we finish this resolution, we'll go back to. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by. Councillor Delorier, all in favor? It's carried. Did you miss 10.4, Your Honor? Uh, I have. I'm going to go back to it right now. Thanks for bringing that up. Resolve that the, five, that the $500 contribution included in the 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van operating budget be made to the Handy Transit Van Vehicle Replacement Reserve. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.6. Sorry for missing that. Maybe I need different color of lines for each. <laughs> Sometimes I get lost in there. <clears throat> okay, so 13. 
Result of pursuits to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Uh, we have the arena project, and I think we'll probably talk a little bit more on that. Town uh, growth plan. <coughs> Town growth plan. And the growth plan as well, yes. Moved by, oh, I think we've done that already. All in favor? 